Hi, John. Hi, Manjula. So thanks for connecting with us. It's a pleasure to be with you. And um, we would be delighted to just know your insights with our community. And today's talk is going to be Mentor Talk. And we need your insights as a mentor in the corporate world, as well as in our startup community, plus the women community, what we are just doing about that. So that's a chat all about. We are just going to explore the journey with you. And dear viewers, thanks for joining with us. And we have John with us. John is a regional vice president in Accenture, representing the EMEA and the Asia Pacific region. Also, more than that, the reason we are excited with John is he's our mentor, first of all. Uh, that's, that's where we are just got connected. And not only with us, he also helped us close to around 17 startups. He's just helping in his capacity, as well as he is also being a coach for many of the individuals. So with that note, we would like to just invite John with you to explore the journey. Feel free to ask your questions regarding how you can just create a mentors in this corporate world to just get connected back and then get back to the career welcome you all so john so let's just go ahead and then explore your journey about where i know a little more about you but for the community purpose uh, tell us about your journey because uh, uh, getting your time is uh, difficult and you keep traveling in your uh, corporate world but you still have the passion to tell us as well as guide us not only ask the similar uh, startups like that how was your journey um it's been a very rich experience, Manjula, of being able to receive from people who have been accomplished in their lives. Um, a lot of people who contributed to my own clarity of my career, uh, making helping me make early decisions that have helped me today to be where I am. Okay. And a lot of what I do today is giving back. It's about understanding where the need is to be able to address those needs, bring the best resources that that need will be fulfilled by and enabling people to be their best selves. Uh, and for me, it's not about some very grand vision. It's about a very simple principle. If I've been blessed by somebody's input, I want to be able to bless somebody else with them. It's passing it forward. And that's my principle. And that's what I operate with. Awesome. And we are also in the recipient stage to receive that. So thanks for doing that. So uh, uh, one fundamental question is one, I understood the passion and you wanted to give it back and all. But looking at the corporate world, you are also being a part of the corporate. And our community, you know that we bring the women back to work. So tell us something about it. Why corporate should be interested in bringing the women back to work? When I ask for that, why also help us with that? the commercial and the social benefits what they are going to reap through the corporate well that's a very good question uh, i think uh, many corporates and organizations are only beginning to discover that a key stakeholder group or a, a segment of their employable community um, are people who are ignored often and they they are these women who respond to their responsibility to society by performing roles as mothers, as wives, and you know, making decisions that are often outside their control uh, because of which their own career path get disrupted. Mm -hmm. And I think as responsible corporates, there has to be a very clear program, a defined awareness around how they will address, enable, equip, and mm -hmm. integrate okay. the needs of this community mm -hmm. uh, in a way that is sustainable and meaningful, both for the corporate as well as for the women. Okay. I don't think uh, it is fair to look at that category of, uh, as an isolated category. It is almost every other woman mm -hmm. who this is relevant to, True. right? And so it is not a special program that a company should adopt. It is an uh, it should be an intrinsic element of their people strategy to say, if we hire women, we should be able to build this uh, capability or this uh, potential for them to take a break and come back seamlessly without losing value or confidence for themselves and the organization derives the, the benefit of having the strategy in place before and not reactively. Super. Radharam, sir, thank you for joining us. Feel free to raise the question in case if you have. So it's the first time we are bringing um, E for She now in our oh. campaign. So John is going to start that as well. So thank you. John, uh, leading to that uh, answer, what you are seeing, people are discovering. It's in the initial phase of it. But still, uh, in our experience, when we connect with the corporate, they still seem to be uh, uh, not finding the answer for the commercial benefit. Still, we get the answers like um, too much time for us to just spend and then mold the people. And still the question mark for them, uh, we don't see the commitment, etc. 
tell us the best practices where you have seen in the corporate or some uh, data pointers where corporate should see that this is adding a value to their uh, organization business perspective okay I, i think there's a question in that question so i'll answer the first part mm -hmm. uh, for you manjula mm. a lot of times i think a majority of times now this is a reactive process right um the women who are coming back into the workforce are being brought back from a csr point of view which is i think the wrong way of doing it right the organization should start with the end in mind which is to say if i'm hiring women i have to be conscious that they have multiple responsibilities not just to the corporate but also to families and society and so our, as a corporate we, we should be equipped to build that into our planning Mm -hmm. into our staffing right so it does it's not when the woman takes a break that they they'll say oh, how do we fill that gap it, sh it should be part of the original plan for staffing right now the commercial benefits i think is a secondary question i'll tell you why if you take care of the first part which is to think of your people strategy holistically mm -hmm. then the commercial benefit it kicks in right from the beginning all right okay but if you look at it in isolation some of the benefits of bringing women back to work is you don't have to spend as much time training them exactly you don't have to spend as much time integrating them into the workforce from a culture point of view mm. what you need to really spend time on is to safeguard their confidence to build their confidence which you have to do for any employee anyways so when people say when hr professionals say that it is additional it's heavy lifting for us to bring in women from that profile i believe that they're just being lazy because there is it is important for them to uh, own the responsibility look at the upside of bringing somebody who is is an experienced hire literally with the additional uh, uh, you know capability that they have now as mothers they are taking on more responsibility that sensitivity they bring to work the empathy they bring to work benefits the organization way beyond monetization super so i i think uh, the if more of the indian corporate realizes that they would be able to reap the untapped talent what is there in abundant in our country we would be able to bring the lot of um, economical benefits along with the social benefits in the uh, country today so thanks for sharing the light um, now with this context let's also look at it because you being the mentor for the many of the community related organization like us Uh, where do you think as a mentor you find it um, difficult when the mentees are connected with you Is, do you think the sustainability in the relationship and the progress in that um i think you've come very prepared today manjula the questions are really good uh, because from a from a mentoring program point of view many people think mentors are coaches they are not okay. from a coaching point of view a coach is somebody who is invested in the individual who comes with the experience that he wants to transfer the knowledge to the individual the coach drives the person who's being coached but in the mentoring dynamic is different the mentor has to be available and accessible but the person the mentee is the one who drives the relationship Absolutely. okay so the, so where a mentorship program fails is often when the mentee does not find the value coming from the mentor or the mentee has multiple mentors therefore they get multiple inputs and so they gravitate towards the ones that they want to go to now i think personally a mentor should not be emotionally involved in a process the mentor should be objective the mentor should hold the mirror up the mentor should understand that you are facilitating and you are enabling decision making as opposed to making the decision for the person so the responsibility for driving a mentoring program lies with the mentee the mentor should continue to stay passive and objective as long as the values are being added to the mentee the right so as you rightly said the uh, responsibility lies with the mentee to do about it being our community is a returning professionals how do we find our mentors is there any tips we can get it from you i think from uh, her second innings perspective uh, the the time that we've existed as an organization as a as a uh, mission Uh, we managed to build really strong relationships in the industry today so we have the capacity as her second innings to connect people who are seeking mentoring mm -hmm. with people who are able to share their experience their knowledge without having to be firmly embedded with each other okay. let me explain what i mean mm -hmm. the mentee should take the responsibility then to drive that connection and therefore agree to be accountable and agree to meet with a mentor or mentors as required periodically a mentee cannot assume that one connect will will be enough 
A okay. mentee should be in it for the long term. And HSI gives you a perfect opportunity to meet or connect with different flavors of mentors who will address different aspects of your requirements. Mm. But the relationship has to be driven by the mentee and that is something that we'll continue to emphasize. Thank you. So there are questions also coming up. Let's just pick it up a couple of questions while we are just discussing about that. So question from Jyotsna. Can you please share more info on the returning returnship for women so that we can apply? So when, probably I'll pick up this sure. question to just do about that. So uh, a team feel free to just look at our uh, opportunities, what is available on the website. And we have also created the closed WhatsApp group for you to share the information, be part of that. And beyond that, um, you can also go to their different corporates where you are looking for go to their website and look at that is there any retention program you can just grab and then apply for it but beyond that uh, the only recommendation we would be sharing with you all across would be make sure you are ready for getting back to the work that's an important element so how do we do that our HSA framework we clearly explains that first check do, what is your career passion and against the career passion do you have a knowledge in case if you are uh, skeptical about or doubtful about that do you have or not pick up the assessment assessment platforms are available at hsi itself or you can also figure it out anywhere else to sure make sure you are knowledge is a uh, well captured and you are in the industry standard part of it number one so the moment you have a knowledge the next question will i be getting the job the answer is no because the reason is the corporate is looking for the skill as well the relevant skill for doing their day-to-day -day job so find out the returnship opportunity either in the corporate or through her second innings or even you can knock out any knockdown any of the startup and saying that i am interested in uh, gaining some experience can i help you so these are all the ways where you can gain your skills once you have a knowledge and skills you are no longer a sabbatical women professional you can just apply anywhere as a lateral hire you would be more than welcome to just have a discussion in this process any support we are happy to help you i hope that answers your query just now so there is another question i think it's for john um, had a corporate experience um, curious to know about startup but not able to pitch an idea in choosing the sector um, one can you just elaborate please brief us the details of startup which strives towards success okay i think i understand Vani's question mm -hmm. um, and this is something that every startup struggles with and okay. every startup wrestles with and the startups that succeed are able to articulate that vision and that singularity of vision so i think the first step for any startup is to arrive at that one thing that they want to be famous for, the one thing that they want to be known for. It can even be something that they want to do, which they want to grow and then sell and do valuation and to, and to be bought out. And that's all. That's come, there's nothing wrong with that. But to be attractive as a value proposition, you have to be clear with that one thing that's going to set you apart or that one cause that you want to be known for. So the first step is identifying that vision, to distill that vision. The moment you do that, it becomes confusing for you to the next step because you'll have so many different ways that vision can take shape. Then the next step is what we call attribution, which basically means how do I attribute this vision to business outcome? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or how do I attribute this vision to outcomes? And depending on who the stakeholders are who benefit from those outcomes, your options begin, begin to get filtered out. Okay. And then you're able to gravitate towards one or two or three options based on which you will start developing your business plan, based on, based on which you start developing the nitty gritties of your approach, where your startup, the shape of your startup begins to uh, resemble something that's uh, relevant to an audience that you want to address. Just to add John's point, in case any of you are interested in uh, exploring your idea and many of the women community members, we were able to connect with John and we are finding some light for their uh, vision of their startup as well. So any of you are interested, wanted to connect with us, we will just validate and then figure it out how we can just help you on that aspect as well. So uh, another comment from Rajaram, inter meaning and deliveral, deliverance well captured okay thank you sir for just doing that and the, another question from anjali i am a biotechnology postgraduate having a long gap want to go for a course that can help me to get a chance but no idea what to do healthcare courses or regulatory affair courses or something else so 
biotechnology is a field that is very versatile uh, anjali and um, first of all let me let me tell you don't lose hope as long as there is that appetite in you that hunger in you to want to go out there and utilize the training that you have in in a way that's beneficial to you primarily and there's nothing wrong with that and also then to society or a corporate that you want to work with i think you should follow your dream chase your dream in terms of enabling yourself or equipping yourself i think the the because the field is so broad what you have to do really is to look at what are the areas that are most passionate for you right and the, the areas that you feel most passionate about rather where you can bring to bear your experience in biotechnology both as a student as well as as a professional if you've worked uh, anywhere before uh, to a new situation now it is too uh, the information that you've shared is too little for me to then be able to give you a very specific response but the way to do that is to research a little bit about what are the jobs jobs uh, you know the the kinds of jobs that are available today that will that your uh, profile will fit in for and then to look at out of those jobs which are the ones that excite you most i think uh, from a future futuristic perspective ai automation machine learning uh, virtual reality all of these are going to change the way biotechnology fields are going to operate in the future okay um, a lot of the um, you know testing the the um, uh, you know the processes that biotechnology undertakes today most of it is getting increasingly uh, automated and i think you should be looking at it from the human impact perspective if there's something that you can use biotechnology for from a human impact point of view that's an area that you should definitely get into because that it will take longer for machines to get into that space so if you can get involved with people like the red cross uh, you know organizations that are into developing care uh, for diseases or uh, research for diseases uh, those are the sort of things that always need uh people with your skills uh the bill and melinda gates foundation and organization like that are always looking for people with your profiles so broaden your your horizon uh look at options that are outside of your regular corporate type works workspace uh and i'm sure you'll have more doors open please please feel free to write to us uh, with more specifics about your passion and your uh, your ambition for yourself don't lose hope we will do our best to connect you with options that uh, you know begin to make sense to you sure so thanks john for sharing that but adding to that is also while you are finding your biotechnology space on that i'm sure you are also passionate about your childhood stuff right people are uh, mostly uh, good in writing and somehow they got into it and they are just looking for something or even uh, people are interested in finding it out to their own or home pruners where they wanted to pursue their just dreams what like uh, setting up a small business or something mm -hmm. so we will also recommend or suggest you while you are choosing one career option to explore choose a secondary one as well so since you have a time let's also push our energy in both the side and most of the online assignments work from assignments are coming up for example uh, you would be seeing our um, updates today in our uh, marketing professionals where we are coming up where uh, our corporates are interested in bringing our women talent for uh, being uh, e learning uh, writers and authors where mm -hmm. for a particular uh, domains uh, right from engineering mm -hmm. uh, psychology and uh, language specific uh, please watch our space and then connect with us more than happy to assist you yeah. okay so going forward with the journey what we have just picked up john um, uh, one of the typical question for women is uh, how will i get back that's the first uh, question how will i get back so do you have some suggestions to start the journey yes i have taken a break and i'm asking a uh, different gender to just know exactly. about it yeah. so but it, it's good to know about your perspective what is your observation how do we get back no i, I think i think it's a very personal question uh, also because my wife uh, uh, is pretty much in the same same zone right now so i relate to it very much okay uh, my wife is a teacher Uh, she's got over 14 years of experience uh, we we shifted from india to singapore uh, and while we were at singapore we found that you know the the situation there is so difficult for indian teachers to get into a job simply because the singapore teachers themselves are getting out of jobs okay so she's in a place now where she's having to look at alternative careers and like you rightly said you know when you're responding to anjali about looking at other ways in which you can utilize your skills so she's doing things like writing mentoring uh, she's doing supply teaching so she's using her time up but honestly as a professional that's not enough you're okay. all you're always saying 
but I did so much of studies. I worked so long. I want to do more real work. Uh, is supply teaching real work? Maybe not. It, maybe just it's a band-aid fix, right? I think the, um, there are two, one of two things that need to happen. One, you have to either accept that, okay, that career path for me has reached a dead end for whatever reason, okay. right? And so an alternate career is something that I have to seek, which might mean I have to upskill, I have to, I have to uh, you know, uh, update myself um, and take on a whole new different construct. So relearning has to happen at a very different level. So I know of friends of mine who moved from a day-to-day corporate job to uh, starting a, a, you know, a, um, uh, tuition uh, classes series or a baking series uh, um, business where they are thriving. They're doing so well. In fact, the satisfaction they have from being able to do things that they love and yet to earn from it. So there is a clear deviation, right? Now, the, the second option is where you utilize your career path. You've taken a break for whatever reason to get back into that career path. There has to be a very active pursuing of those opportunities. Uh, in the industry today, I think one of the things that women don't do and they should do more is kind of head others. They inevitably only post on uh, job sites and they wait for things to happen or they respond to ads and they wait for things to happen. But they should look at up, upskilling their resume to start with, you know, to re- refabricate it or, or to repackage it and then to be able to pitch themselves in a whole new way. And I found... Uh, women who yeah, who are able to position themselves in a whole new light, considering the journey that they've been through, are able to catch people's imagination more. So there are several ways we can do it. There is no one sure shot rule. But one thing I admit is it is a real thing that it is a challenge. Uh, and I think more than men, women are equipped to overcome these challenges because they're emotionally stronger, they're physically capable. And to be able to you know make that connect, their confidence has to be built. And I think that's something that we need to focus on. Awesome. So getting this response from the uh, male counterpart is really nice. So thanks for just sharing that. That's nice. Okay. There's a one more query is coming up. Do we have opening for HR recruiter second career? Can I apply through a reboot program? So just to share the light on it, um, we constantly encourage the women to take the alternate career and a couple of uh, uh, returnship people are connected with us and they are learning on the job. We do have a program where if you are new to this, uh, Arena, what you are talking about, you can just go and pick up the training and connect with us wherever, like John said, we are trying our best to extend our arms to just help you connect with us. We are more than happy to support you about that. But I think for Sujoy, we have to start his second innings because he's looking at... <laughs> yeah, his second innings. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's another startup idea. In case in your startup world, you can just advise someone Thanks, to sir. have a, his second innings to pick it up. So that's a, thanks, Sujoy, for asking about that. Good. So uh, as a, um, since we have just come to the end of the program, so just to figure it out, what's your uh, long-term vision of supporting this community? I know your journey. So where, where do you see your uh, final destination, John? It's a personal question for me to know. Sure. Um, I think eventually I want to go back to teaching. I okay. want to be involved with uh, teaching, training, development, uh, simply because I believe uh, people benefit from other stories. Okay. And in being able to take your story out to people who might find it uh, you know, an inspiration uh, to, to, to build hope. Uh, so for me, long term, that's where I'm headed. Um, I'm... Uh, very intimately involved with school, the school, the academic programs across the region, where we redesign the academic program for uh, a sustainable talent pool. Uh, traditionally, in India and a lot of other places in the world, the academic system is designed as a nursery to cater to an industry requirement. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of your curriculum and your uh, academic frameworks are redundant today of becoming increasingly redundant because the job scene is changing, the workforce of the future is changing. Mm. And so you're still trying to fit students in boxes that are not required for the future. So how do how does the academic system change? How do the frameworks, the, bro- the molds break so that the new way of thinking and, and the new uh, approach to education can be implemented so that the talents coming out can address the workforce of the future as opposed to trying to fit the workforce of the past. So my passion is about that. That's what I'm involved with and that's what I'll continue to be in 
in models in the future. Awesome, good. So that, that, that's the answer for me as well. So thank you so much, John, to just do about it. Uh, team, uh, the one of the things we reiterate for everybody is just connect with us. Also, just uh, refer any of the women because our mission is to bring the women, every woman, to have the financial independence. If you come across any of your neighbor or colleague or someone, just tell them there is a platform called Her Second Innings is trying to create a awareness and help them women to come back. So happy to just help you in any of the time. And thanks, John, just for being with us and a pleasure to have you My hope our community is just getting little insight about our discussion thanks for being with us pleasure. thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you team